Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Raw Life Health Show. I'm so excited to have another great guest on. Uh, it's my good friend, Bob McCauley. Uh, and Bob's uh, been eating a raw vegan diet for a long time, and he's very outspoken about it. So we're going to hear his story today. Uh, so hello, Bob. How are you? I'm doing great, Paul. How's everything? Thanks for having uh, me on. Uh, I've been wanting to have this interview for a while because you've been uh, so consistent with your uh, and diligent with your, you know, telling people this message of, of health and you're a living example of it. So tell everybody your story of how you got to, uh, so you've been on a raw vegan diet now a hundred percent for over 20 years, correct? Yeah. So let, how, how did you get into this? Were you sick when you were young? What's your story? And, and, and I'll ask questions after you tell your story. Okay. So I, I started out in, uh, well, first of all, I've been a vegetarian now for 42 years and I became a vegetarian in India in 1980. I was traveling. I had a backpack and um, I just was there for six months. And um, I remember the very last time I ate meat, it was in uh, Jammu, India, and um, it was on the street and it was really delicious. It was curry. But, you know, I kept getting sick all the time when I was there, even after, right after I arrived. And then, um, you know, I just you looked at the meat and you looked at the chicken and they had mutton, you know, that which is uh, lamb. So that's all they had. And it was sketchy. So I'm just like, forget the meat. And then I kind of, you know, I got to know their philosophy. That's why I went there. I kind of was, you know, searching for God type of thing. And I just wanted to go everywhere. I was so fascinated with it. So, um, you know, I, I started reading the Bhagavad Gita. That's their Bible. And I'm not any kind of Hindu or anything. I'm Christian. But, um, you know, I just uh, got, got into the philosophy that of, of not eating meat. And, of course, there was no none available. So after I left India, um, I just kept, stayed with it. And uh, this was in 1980. So by the time I got home in 1981, I mean, there was no vegetarians. I mean, they, they were like, what's a vegetarian? And I don't eat meat. And you're like, oh, you eat chicken, right? And I'm like, no, I, I don't. <laughs> That'd be meat, you know. So there was a lot of, you know, things. My parents thought this was really strange. And uh, so I was like that for about 18 years. And then, you know, slowly I got introduced to spirulina which is, uh, you know, people call it a blue green algae, it's really cyanobacteria. And then I discovered chlorella. And, um, and then it was really, uh, honestly, who kind of introduced me to raw foods is our mutual friend who just passed away, Hiawatha. And she didn't introduce me to the raw food diet. She g gave me some sprouts and she was trying to get me to spell, sell these sprouts that she was, you know, growing um, in my store. So I started doing this and then I said to myself, okay, now why do I want to eat a sprout? Why do, you know, okay, enzymes. So the word came up enzymes and then I got a book by Edward, How I think it's, uh, yeah, Edward Howell, uh, raw food, the uh, enzyme therapy book. And I read it and then it just all made sense. So I said, okay, here's what you want. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, you want raw foods. You want, you're only going to find these enzymes in one place. He talked about foods that didn't have enzymes and how they could be, um, or enzyme inhibitors, that they could be dangerous for you. So I kind of learned a little bit about that. And then, um, you know, I had all these uh, vitamins in, in my refrigerator, Sogar, spending a fortune on that. And then I just went, wow, there's just like between the spirulina and the chlorella, chlorella is a green algae, and my raw foods, well, why do I need any of this stuff? So I kind of, I probably took it all. I don't think I threw it out, but I think probably finished it off. And that was the last time I had any kind of supplement like that. And then, um, you know, I, I attended one of their raw food potlucks back and that was about 98. And that was here in Lansing. I was cricket lot, was there in Hiawatha. And I, I just was eating all these foods. And I mean, like they're hundred percent raw and they were delicious. And I, I was like, wow, I can't believe this. They're making, you know, like these salads and they were making spaghetti and they were making sweet potato pie. And it was just unbelievably delicious and all raw. So that's how I got into it. And then by, so by around 98, 99, I was, you know, probably 80% raw. I, uh, I transitioned through with rice because I figured uh, you needed rice to kind of fill you up and then you needed this starchy carbohydrate, you know, so, you know, cause I didn't really have anybody who really explained the whole thing to me. Here's what you want to do. Here's how you have it. I just knew that because I took the spirulina and the chlorella 
and I, I'm a runner and, and I'm an, so I'm always been athletic and I could just see my times were dropping right away. My recovery was quicker. I felt better. And the one big thing that I got out of my diet was, uh, so I stopped eating meat, but I was eating a little bit of fish, some eggs. You know, when I was in India, I was living like, you know, three months on eggs, eggs and, and peanuts that you, I could, because sh- you could shell it in front of me and I could watch them cook the eggs. But then I gave up, especially the dairy products, and then all my sinuses cleared up. And, um, you know, I just felt so much better. So that's how I got into it. And then um, I was just making a lot of salads because I didn't know what else to do. And really, to this day, um, you know, I usually don't eat until noon. You know, I always want to fast. I like to have like a good, if I can, at least a 12 hour, maybe 15 hour, 17 hour fast every single day. And that, so I've just got to clear out that stomach. And, um, and so I wait till about noon and then I have fruit and uh, because it's light and it doesn't, you know, weigh it down or anything. And then I eat spirulina and chlorella and uh, lots of water. That was another thing right around that time because I opened my store. I, again, I started bottle water in the bottle water business out of my house. And then um, and then I got my own store because I could see these supermarkets are just going to control my whole lifestyle or my whole business and everything because I was doing great in the in the in the supermarkets when they wanted me to. And so then I had to get my own store. And that was a blessing because I get all these people that wanted, you know, they were they you know what I realized at the time that water is a health product and nobody else really saw it as that. And um and so the, all these health people just kept coming in, people like Hiawatha and um, and all sorts of other ones. And then, like I said, I found out about the raw food potluck and all that thing. And um, so I just said, wow, this is it. This is fantastic. So by 2000, year 2000, I was really uh, pretty much a raw foodist, eating f- a lot of fruit during the day and um and then a salad at night. That's how I was doing it. And then I had this rice and that was, it took me about four years to get rid of the rice. And you can see how addictive that is because, you know, it took me two times to say, okay, I'm not going to eat rice anymore. And then I kept eating it. And, you know, it's just something you don't need, you know, you just, you don't need rice, you know, you can sprout it maybe if, you know, if you want, but you don't need rice. So that's how I got going. And then I was into the water. I was always a water drinker. Because, I mean, I grew up on, and I know you had a real junk food diet back when you lived in New York, you were, you know, and I grew up in the 60s, and I tell people all the time, my bones are are made out of Coca-Cola and Oreo cookies, and I just eat, you know, garbage. I was in high school, and a runner, I was one of the best runners in the school, and my coach said, you know, he says, don't eat these, this crap, don't eat this potato chips and candies and, and, and soft drinks and pop and all that stuff. And I mean, it was just like, I never heard anybody ever say, uh, you know, when you eat this, this will, this will improve you or hurt you. I never had any education, you know, the public schools, they don't give you any education on what to eat. You know, you, you, you can see what's in the public schools in the, in the cafeterias, it's garbage. But uh, my coach just mentioned that and it was like the first time. So actually when I went, I lived in Israel uh, while I was in college, I went to Israel for six months. I lived there. I lived on a couple of different kibbutz and that's when I gave up all the junk. But it's after that, when I graduated from college and I traveled all over the world and I went to India, that's when I really got in first into the vegetarian diet. But, you know, I did that for many years and becoming a vegetarian and even becoming a cooked food vegetarian, that, you know, that's a step toward health. But, you know, becoming a raw food, uh, you know, vegan, that's 10 giant leaps. There's nothing compared because that's the true health. That's really what health is all about is the raw food diet. I mean, if you, if you, if I ever eat anything cooked, then I don't feel good, you know, or in, and if I really don't eat something good, you know, a lot or something, you know, I don't feel good at all. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Whereas I can eat like I do every night now. Um, I do my set, my kind of do fruit during the day, uh, always my spirulina and chlorella because you want a little bit of protein. You don't need a lot. Um, and then, um, you know, and then, and then I do my salad at night. And then through the years, I found out more about, you know, I found alkaline ionized water. It's very important. That's a big part of my health protocol. And then I, you know, I, not too long, I found out about probiotics and no, I'd never heard of it before. And then I found out later in the mid 2000s about minerals and staying mineralized. I do these liquid angstrom minerals, kind of like these. You take a little uh, teaspoon and, and put it under your tongue about, so a capful or a teaspoon. 
and that's the best way to get minerals. So little by little, I kept, you know, finding out what, you know, really belongs in the body and what doesn't. And so that's how I got going on the whole, th right. whole thing. And like I said, I just stayed, you know, I stayed vegan. Um, you know, me, you know, all your animal foods, I always tell people, you know, I make every time I make a video about meat, um, I get, that's when they attack me. Everybody attack, you know, it's all the meat eaters. And even though I have said for all these times, you want to eat meat, eat meat. Uh, I'm not going to get into all these, uh, you know, animal rights issues because it's a totally different subject. I, it's not that I disagree, but, you know, um, it's where you get your protein. So you look at the animals we eat, they're almost all vegetarians. Uh, you know, in fact, I don't I can't think of one, you know, like a cow or a chicken or a fish. They're all vegans and they're, they're just taking the food into their body and then creating the flesh or the fat or what or accumulating the fat. And then we eat them. So they're just a middleman. And um, we eat those for the taste. I mean, so the only reason we eat any food, in particular cooked foods, uh, is because you like the taste. And you're under the mistaken, um, you know, notion that they're actually healthy for you when they're not. And, um, and that's the really hard thing for people because they come in with their home cooked meals. Like I go to church, you know, we have a big potluck once a month, you know, for the men, you know, we go down there. And they bring in all their, you know, spaghetti and it's all homemade and all that and they're chili and then they're like well this is healthy food and you know i, I said well they it tastes no good idea. but it's not, no it's not healthy yeah so no people idea. can't get past that yeah sure so yeah. let me ask let me ask you so uh, what's your age currently 65 65 and you have no health issues none whatsoever i i always go once a year for my blood work it always comes back perfect uh, my B, my B6 is fantastic. That's your brain B vitamin B5 also. And, um, and my B12 is uh, both of them are off the charts. And uh, by the way, where you get B12 uh, for a vegan is you need cobalt. I've got some right here. That's my liquid. Okay. And then you need uh, bacteria. So you need probiotics because it's the bacteria and the cobalt. That's why they call it, you know, methylcobamine is, um, and you don't want the cyanocobamine, by the way, because that's a cyanide molecule. So that's what they usually manufacture. And that's what you see in all these B12 supplements. But I'd stay away from that. Um, yeah. I did a few videos on that recently. But, um, you know, because they're always, where are you going to get your protein? Well, you get it from spirulina and chlorella. And all you need is a small little handful of spirulina and chlorella. Uh, protein, I think, one of the most un misunderstood nutrients the idea that we need like a big steak, you know, at the center of our meal. And, um, and so really when then they'll tell you the average adult guys about our age or whatever, um, our weight, um, you know, they need uh, 51 grams of protein a day. Well, really what they're telling you is 50 grams, 51 grams of meat and about 15, one five, 15% 15 of meat is on average is about uh, maybe 15 to 18% is actual protein. So the rest of that is just, you know, who, whatever, it's just filler. Uh, it's, it's sinew and it's muscle mass, muscle from the meat, but uh, you don't really need that much protein. Yeah. So the per perfect protein sources are spirulina and chlorella. And I will say at 65, I'm, I've always been athletic. I work out every single day, except maybe if I got to go to church at night, but um, I still run a six minute mile. And, you know, I know that at my age, if I really want it, and I'm just working out, I'm not going crazy. I'm not doing, you know, tons of stuff. I, I just want to stay in shape. I weight lift. Um, you know, I think that's important to do every day because an hour after you do hard physical labor, um, that's when you produce HGH, human growth hormone. And that's really important. It's one of the reasons I take Makuna every night before, right before I go to bed, which is an herb and it's got L-DOPA and that produces a whole bunch of brain chemicals, uh, but in particular so HGH. I have a question. So you take in yeah. the angstrom minerals, you take in the spirulina and the algae. I would cons and uh, and the the spirulina uh, and the chlorella. I would I wouldn't consider that a supplement. I would consider that a food. But you are you taking do. the angstrom minerals. You are taking uh, uh, the cobalt uh, and yeah, co cobalt and the well. I'm taking cobalt, for instance. You know, I mean, I have a I have one. But would you consider these? Um, would you consider these supplements? Yeah, I guess you know you got to get them into your body so you can say, yeah, I supplement with those. 
Um, and I, I agree with you 100%. And spirulina and chlorella are whole foods. Now, just I've interviewed chemicals. people that, that uh, don't take any supplements at all. And they say they're doing fine. Do you think everyone needs supplements or it depends where the people are at, where their health is at, where they're dieting? Do you think people can uh, need them? Yeah, I, you know, in the end, yes, I do think you supplement, say probiotics, if you want to call it a supplement. Okay, you got to have your probiotics. You got to have your digestive enzymes. Um, and when you say and, you got to have them, Bob, what do you mean you got to have them? Well, you- because I don't, okay, it's a good question. Um, you, um, you really can't break down all your food um, if you don't have the enzymes in there. And really, for the most part, unless you really, really stay healthy and it's really, you know, really hard to do that, no matter, you know, as you get older and older. But, um, you know, you, you won't you, you can't you really can't get all the nutrients you need and all the things you can get from from supplement or from raw food diet from raw foods and, because you really have to eat so much of a great variety of foods, which I big into that, I'd say variety, 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 you need a huge amount, not just of one type of raw food, but as many ones, many different types of foods as possible. And, um, you know, you go by the season, you know, mangoes are in season, you have a lot of mangoes, you know, you have, you know, whatever you got arugula, you know, during the summer, whatever that is happens to be one of my favorite foods. But, um, you know, so you can do that, but it's just so hard to get everything you want. So digestive enzymes is an example. I, it's really hard. Your body's really not producing all the amylase and salivase and uh, lactase and uh, all the other different types of digestive enzymes in your body that you can use. So I recommend you supplement with it. For a long time, I kind of said, well, you don't need digestive enzymes because you should be getting those from the raw foods because essentially raw foods kind of really self-digest. They really get into your body immediately. Um, but in the end, I think you really need the, the digestive enzymes It's you know, again, for years, I wasn't a, really in favor of that once I started taking them and promoting them, you know, um, they help, they really are necessary. And I always promote these things because I'm a super health fanatic. I think you're a super health fanatic too. Um, but in the end, the average person, they're not going to eat the way we, eat. um, they're not going to live in a raw food diet. And they might have a salad, you know, but they're still going to have a cooked food meal. And I keep telling people, you want to have a cooked food meal and then have a big salad and try to do it that way. But um, yeah, I mean, I've got all sorts of supplements. Um, I've got this one here. This is called Magteen as an example. This is magnesium l and It's the only kind of magnesium that crosses the brain blood barrier. And anybody with Alzheimer, Alzheimer's, or dementia of any kind, you know, when they've autopsied them, they see no magnesium in the brain. And uh, same smart monkey, stupid monkey, smart monkey, full of magnesium, stupid monkey, no magnesium. So there's things you can do to improve your health. So yeah, I'm big into it. I've got, you know, I've got some astaxanthin here as an example. That'd be really hard to get. That's from an algae, but that'd be really hard to go out and harvest that yourself. It's not, you know, it's just not given to uh, you know, that's what makes the, the pink and the flamingo is the asses. Sure. Yeah, I and actually have a big, I'm, I'm a big promoter of astaxanthin. Uh, it's the number one thing I promote because uh, besides the raw food, I, I mean, I have seen, especially with people that have gotten themselves in a situation with inflammation, uh, the astaxanthin is absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, uh, so I'm a big promoter of that. And, you know, so we all have our thing, but I interview a lot of people that are doing the, the, raw food diet for many, many years. Some people refer to them as a natural hygienist or so on. Mm -hmm. Some of them believe in supplements and some of them don't believe in supplements. Some of them have whole foods in a supplement form. Uh, So do you think uh, there's, it depends where a person started out and where they're living and all these things determine it or what food's available to them because there are some people that grow their own food. Or do you think everyone uh, is going to just benefit from the, 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 the supplements that you recommend? I, I, in the end, I think, you know, I was kind of opposed to supplements for a long time. Um, and like I, we were talking, the spirulina and the chlorella are whole foods just in tablet form. But, you know, the FDA refers to those as supplements. So that's it. You have no choice but to go along with them. But um, yeah, you, you really you really need to supplement with things. I'll give you another example would be serapeptase, talking about inflammation. So that's a, that's a systemic enzyme, right, Corey? There's digestive enzymes for your digestion and then systemic or system ion or, or enzymes for your, for your body. 
And, you know, everything we do, it's so important to know that everything we do is enzymic reactions. You, you walk, you think, you talk, you blink, you do anything you do um, is uh, that is all um, enzy enzymic reactions. Your little smile, that's a whole compli complicated sequence of enzymes. So we're, that's what drives everything. It drives what drives every, you know, living being on the planet are, are, is enzymes. And we're constantly removing those from our diet and eating cooked foods. So that's why you wither away. And, um, and why you see people, by the way, another, another good example would be uh, nucleic acids. Now that's RNA. And RNA is the blueprints to our cell. And um, it's very difficult to get those into our diet in, huge, um, in, in large amounts that can really help us. And when it's this, so if you don't have the blueprints to your cell, the RNA, when your cell goes to divide, then you get it. If you don't have all the instructions, well, you get a diminished copy. And then you, the next time you get a diminished copy of a diminished copy and you, you, you get worse and worse as you go. And that's why you see people that go from like, so sort of 40, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. And then, you know, they start hitting 70, 80, and then 90 to 100, I mean, they just drop right off the, the map, okay? And that's because you don't have the RNA. So it's one of the, for me, one of the keys to longevity. And again, you get that from concentrated chlorella or chlorella extract, which is known as chlorella growth factor or CGF. And then there's another um, type of uh, uh, yeast called fragilis uh, that I sell, and that has huge amounts of nucleic acids. So that's another example of a, um, of a supplement that uh, really gives you these nucleic acids or these blueprints to your cells that you're really going to need if you want uh, longevity. Another one would be Tomcat Alley. Uh, if you look at anybody who gets old, their, te their testosterone drops off dramatically, and this has a tremendous uh, effect on your longevity. So I promote Tomcat Alley. It's the best form of, uh, or the best way to get testosterone because it doesn't produce testosterone in the body. It keeps it in its free form. So that's another one that I promote. And then, as I mentioned a little earlier, Makuna, Makuna Prurians. That's an herb. I do a 15% extraction. It's L-DOPA, but that helps you produce HGH, human growth hormone. So uh, that's a key to longevity. So if you really want to stay young and you're really vibrant, yeah, I, I think supplements are, are incredible. You know? So how many... So I want to get into your daily routine, but how many supplements, just give me a rough number, or whether the whole foods and supplement form or supplements would you say you take daily? I, you know, um, so I'm not, I, there's probably 50 supplements that I take. You know, I have a couple hundred products. Daily on a daily basis? Not on a, not on a oh. daily basis. So they're all kind of in and out. Well, you know, I have my go-tos, Makuna's one. Uh, the mag magnesium l this one happens to be one of my go-tos every day. Um, another one is um, ashwagandha. I take ashwagandha. I do a 2.5% extraction. And when, when you hear this 2.5%, that's the active ingredient. So you're looking for the willithinoids in ashwagandha. And I mean, you could go get ashwagandha root and try to eat that much, but you're going to have to eat a lot of that stuff to be able to get what you can get from a, an, an extracted herb. So ashwagandha is a big one. Uh, you know, I'm up in Michigan. So during the winter in particular, I take vitamin D. Okay. Um, I like taking vitamin C. I recommend that highly. Um, you know, vitamin E is another really good one for the okay, immune system. Okay, so let me ask you, let me ask you this, Bob. Yeah. Uh, here in Florida years ago, I remember, uh, there used to be this guy in Whole, he worked at Whole Paycheck. I mean, Whole Foods. He worked at Whole Foods. And his name was, no food Fred. And the reason yeah. why they called him no food Fred is he went one or two years with no food. All he did was took vitamins and supplements. And I found that very interesting. I don't know the details much of the person. I might have saw him once or twice. He was very skinny. Uh, but do you think we like food is our primary a source of nutrients and supplements are true supplements where they're supplementing our diet? Or do you believe because of where we live in today and how bad the food is, the supplements are the key essentials and the diet is just like for, ple the food is for more for pleasure than nutrition or, or um, have I a different thought about it. I, I, yeah, definitely. I'm, um, so the most important thing I do is drink water every day. And I put, you know, that's really, I've got a raw food pyramid 
And at the bottom of that is water. And that's some something, of course, very few people really talk about or understand what kind of water. You always want to stay away from purified water, which is reverse osmosis or distilled water. But that's a huge, I mean, that's what I do. I get up in the water, morning. I never, I never eat anything until I've drank probably about uh, almost two liters of water. You never want to drink more than one liter per hour, one quart. It's very dangerous beyond that. But, um, but yeah, I think so. The, the foundation of my diet, my, the nutritional foundation is spirulina and chlorella. That's where I'm getting all my nutrition. So, I mean, the really dense, because it's so dense, you know. And, um, and this is cultivated in, you know, in ponds in a controlled environment outside. Um, and then, um, so it's not taken out of a lake or anything like that or the ocean. And then, um, so at any rate, and then, uh, so food in them beyond the spirulina and chlorella, which you don't need a lot of really, um, then it's food. So really, uh, it's all these different types of food. And I know it's not as good as what you get. The best stuff you're going to get is out of your garden. Um, and, or if you can go out and forage for some wild food, which I do in my own yard, uh, during the summer, you know, I get a lot of dandelion greens and a lot of lamb's quarter. And, uh, you know, there's a few other foods that are in abundance out there and I'm constantly taking that and putting it into my salad. They're super bitter. So, you know, that, you know, it's really great stuff. I mean, if you get, the, uh, poisonous. Root, they're, either, they're either super nutritious or poisonous, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. you got to be careful, but. I yeah. agree that they're so powerful. Uh, and as for gardening, it depends what people, how people are gardening. It depend. But let me ask you about water because you have a store called The Watershed and you're talking about the importance of water. You mentioned the waters you don't recommend. Uh, tell us a little about the water you recommend, but the water you don't recommend, I've always heard like you, me- you recommended not to do distilled or, or, or reverse osmosis. Is right. that because uh, uh, some people say, it leaches the minerals from the body because it's, it's just a dead liquid. Right. Well, so, um, yeah, that's exactly right. So, uh, you, you know, first of all, the reason um, uh, w- how we ended up with purified water and being so healthy is because that started back in the 1970s with the health food movement and uh, the, everything had to be pure. So we want pure water. Well, there, um, there, uh, I not, or purified water um, uh, such as dist- distilled water or reverse osmosis, uh, that's pure H2O. That's a pure chemical substance. And you do not find pure chemical substance in nature, period. Rainwater, they'll tell you all the time, I heard the argument a thousand times, rainwater is purified water. It's not. Um, because if you take purified water and you put it and freeze it in your, fri- uh, your freezer, and it's going to come out clear, and there's not you're going to be able to see right through it where um, if you look at regular water, you put it in there, it's got minerals in it, either tap water or mineral water, that's going to turn all cloudy. And that's because you're getting ice crystals in there. And that's why purified water, uh, is, you know, like rainwater is not pure because if, if it was, then you wouldn't get snowflakes when it freezes because the, the, the crystals have got to form around something. So that's interesting. I never heard of that, but it, that makes yeah, sense. So you're never going to get this pure, you know, I mean, if you do it with, you know, pure what purified water, you won't get those crystals in there. I'm going to check so my we're not, eyes. We're not having that rain down on us. Very um, interesting. Yeah. And then, so um, you want the minerals because number one, purified water leaches minerals from the body. It's, it's, it's a purified substance and it's acidic. Okay. So it's going to want to grab on anything in nature that's pure, either in its gaseous or liquid forms um, is going to want to immediately uh, you know, b- come into something else and get new, become neutralized. It doesn't want to say in its neutral state. This is this is how we end up with tornadoes. You got a, a cold front and a hot front coming through, and they, you know, they meet with each other, and they're gonna, you know, so we end up getting the the tornadoes on the edge of that. But this is the way nature has always been. So um, that's why you stay away from purified water because um, number one, it leaches minerals from the body because it's acidic and your minerals are alkaline. So you end up losing your calcium, magnesium, that kind of thing. Number one, uh, number two, um, it's called the, the water molecule cluster is five sided. There's a product out there in the market called Penta water. And that's why they call it Penta water. Well, that is not a natural, uh, f- uh f- form in, uh, in, or shape in nature. What is natural in nature is at the hexagon. Uh, the six-sided object, and you will see that throughout nature. You find it in crystals, you see it in beehives, you see it in 
uh, uh, crystalline structures all throughout the world. You see it in uh, uh, snake skin. You see it in uh, bug insect eyes. It's just prevalent. It's throughout there. And the guy that did a lot of work on this is Dr. Gerald Pollack. He wrote the fourth, fourth phase of water. And I know him pretty well. And I've interviewed him a few times. And he's, he's, he's been studying something he calls EZ water or exclusion zone water. Well, that essentially is ionized water, which is what I've promoted for all these years. And um, because that produces the hexagonal molecule cluster. So you drink it pure, if you drink purified or if you drink purified or regular water, it kind of fills you up um, quite a bit. It kind of makes you sloggy. Whereas uh, ionized water, you can big, drink a big tall glass of alkaline ionized water and um, you know it just goes right into your body immediately you feel so much better so much hydrated my I can really taste it you know like I was down in Florida a week ago and you know we didn't have, we just had spring water and when I got back I mean literally I walked into the house and <laughs> got my pure my water uh, you know ionizer and had myself a big tall glass of ionized water I mean it's like, you call it what you want I'm addicted to it uh, whatever. It's a healthy addiction, but I just love it. I feel so much more hydrated. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. I, I'm going to put your, 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 the information to your shop. You call it's called the watershed and you sell water ionizers, uh, yeah. on your website and, uh, yeah. Answer all these questions. You're loaded with information, but I'll put that below. Uh, I have uh, some questions about your daily routine, but you were going to say something else about the ionized. Water. Well, the, the main, uh, this real briefly, I wrote a whole book about it. It's called The uh, Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water. Um, you, wrote, it's, you wrote three books, correct? I've written seven books now. Seven books, okay. Yeah, and so um, uh, this is my best-selling book. Everybody's interested in this. I mean, I, I have sold tens of thousands of copies of this. I never really promoted it. I didn't advertise it. I didn't market it. Um, but people are just interested in what kind of water to drink. But ionized water has three antioxidant properties. So when you pour it out like that, you have an abundance of electrons, which is free radical scavenger, a negative ORP, okay, and uh, which is oxidation reduction potential. And this is, this is the key, is the ORP. And then there's active hydrogen in there. And then it's also very alkaline. If you see anybody, when somebody's sick, you know two things about them. You know that in, it's like, take, I don't care if it's cancer, arthritis, you name it. You know that they're acidic, their body is acidic, which you measure in your pH. And you do that, you don't do it one day, you do it first thing when you wake up in the morning and you do it every day, if you can, for a month. So you get a moving average and you'll see you're very acid. You look at a cancer patient on their deathbed, they're going to be extremely acidic. If you ever go to a cancer ward, you walk up there, you're going to have a real strong, unique smell. What's going on there is your body has become so acidic that it's begun to produce this ammonia to offset it. Ammonia is very alkaline. And so your body's just eating itself alive between this acidic and this, uh, this alkalinity. So um, you want to raise that body pH up to neutral and it's very alkaline. You know, the, not, uh, the pH is nine and a half to 10. And then again, you've got these small water molecule clusters that are hexagonal in shape. So it's extremely hydrating, very penetrating, and it pushes out all the things that don't belong in the body, which we call toxins. So you know, if you're sick, you're toxic, you have things in your body that don't belong there. And it, that got in mainly through a cooked food diet. And then you know, you know, you know you're acidic. And the amazing thing about uh, the, uh, about uh, ionized water, is in this thing, like I said, ORP. Um, raw fruits and vegetables and ionized water are um, identical to one another in every single way, except ionized water doesn't have any nutrients. So you're really kind of drinking in uh, this uh, raw fruits and vegetables the same. That's what I was gonna quality. ask you, is, is some yeah. people I've interviewed, they said they don't drink water at all. They just eat fruits and vegetables and that's where they get their water from. So two right. questions. Number one, is the water that's in fruits and vegetables alkalizing? It is. Okay. It is. The other question is, is, is it okay for somebody to just, in your opinion, to not drink any water and just get it from the fruits and vegetables? I don't think you're going to get anywhere near the hydration that you need. People talk about drinking. You need to drink half your weight in ounces every day. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you want 50 ounces. That's the minimum. That's just, you, you know, you're going to lose a gallon of water a day through the natural processes, you know, of, of the human body. Water is required for everything. 
And every, all your digestive processes, uh, all, all the physiological process in the body, everything involves water. So you've got to have it. It is the cornerstone of health. And like I said, I, what's so ma amazing about ionized water and, um, is that it is identical to raw fruits and vegetables. So you know you're drinking right, something that is just like nature. And, and again, you will, I always said, uh, ionized water, everybody said, well, you got to make this with a machine so it's artificial. Well, you're reproducing what you find in nature. And basically what you're doing with the water, because you're producing two different waters at the same time, one acid. Well, that's what alkaline. I meant to ask you before. I meant to ask you, is, I said alkalizing, but is the water that's in the fruits and vegetables ionized? That was, that was my supposed to Well, I mean, they, they're going to be, um, uh, are they ionized? Yeah, I think they are um, hexagonal in shape. And I do think they have a negative charge. And that's where that water in there comes from. And like I said, uh, raw fruits and vegetables, ionized water, identical to one another. And this, there's this key here, I don't want to miss this, is ORP, oxidation redemption, reduction potential. So that what that is, is, so when you take a raw food, that has a negative charge. And when you eat it, uh, you're reducing the oxidation of your body. And so oxidation is rust and uh, fire. Those are two good examples. So slow oxidation, fast oxidation. Now, when you cook that food, and you cook a burger or you make a soup out of it, even if it's a vegan soup, it doesn't matter. You've oxidized everything. So now you're putting into your body something that's been oxidized is now in the plus range. And so you're accelerating the aging process. And this is why everything you put into your body needs to have a negative charge. Well, again, all we have is raw fruits and vegetables and ionized water. I don't know anything else that has a negative charge. So that's that to me is is really the, the most important term you can ever learn about health is ORP, oxidation reduction potential. Yes. So, so, you, you know, our, so that's what, and again, that's why you want to eat raw fruits and vegetables. But that's why. You were talking earlier about the pH and raising the pH and lowering the pH. Isn't the, the body's blood neutral, the pH neutral, uh, regardless of, of how you're eating? And is it, is it always going to be? So your blood is seven? always, your your blood is always a pH 7.25 to 7.45. That's it. Now, if it gets out of that range, you're in trouble. You're yeah. in big trouble fast. But that's your blood, okay? So anything that gets into the blood that's not in the right pH, your, your blood you just immediately shoves it out into the body, okay? So that's why you get this accumulation of acidity in the body. And um, this is what it's all about. And again, as I said, you want to measure that through your through your your uh, your urine because you don't want to do your tongue because that's from the waist up is what you when you're measuring your tongue and that's going to be very deceptive if you look at elderly people their pH is going to be very high you'll see them I mean all these nurses will say oh yeah they're way up there I mean they're they're a pH of like eight and nine well you're measuring and that's because they've lost their hydrochloric acid see they don't they don't produce that at all anymore and this is why, you know, again, when you, um, when you eat, you always want to chew your food. You know, they always say, chew your juice, you know, and drink your food, that type of thing. And, um, but you want that chewing because that mechanical action, you know, there's a lot of parts of the dig digestion. And um, if you just juice exclusively, you're going to miss that chewing. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't recommend people chew gum because you're chewing and chewing and chewing and you're, you're really activating your digestive process down there. And that shouldn't be, that shouldn't happen until you're actually eating. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you know, so you, you want to have this diet of raw fruits and vegetables. And like I said, uh, another key thing, so we don't go too far without mentioning is fasting. So I'm big into fasting. As I said, I like to fast 12, 15 hours every day. That's, that's the healthy. And people have been talking about intermittent fasting. They got all these terms or, coming up with, you know, for the same thing, um, you know, they're always telling you, you know, always changing things so they can market it a different way, but intermittent fasting, however you want to uh, call it, it gives your, you know, fasting gives your body a chance to rest, uh, repair and cleanse itself. And there's nothing else. There's nothing more the healthier than fasting. It is the healthiest thing. Now you can take it too far. Um, you know, but I think a seven day fast is about as far as you want to go with it. Um, but usually, you know, I mean, a one day or two day or three, fa three day fast. I mean, every religion talks about it. Uh, every health guru, um, you know, Norman Walker talked about it. He was a he was a, a purified water proponent. He talked about a lot about fasting. Paul Bragg talked about it. Not exactly the healthiest guy in the world, Paul Bragg. But um, 
he he, he was a big promoter of purified water besides he, besides not eating 70s. besides not eating late at night your intermediate fasting or do you want to call it how often do you fast do you fast one day a week five days a month do you, do you have any routine oh, i might i might do one or two days a month but then again every single day i'm getting this um you know i'm getting this 15 hour cleanse where i'm not putting anything into my body and it's not really i mean the the i think some of the most greatest expenditure of energy in your body is of is uh, digestion any you know you really you're and that this is one of the reasons why i recommend taking um not only probiotics the friendly bacteria i'm big into that you know i knew a woman right when i got into this thing this is back in the in the mid 90s and she had a real serious yeast infection really bad and um in her vaginal area and so um i you know i gave her some spirulina and it helped a lot or a little bit i should say but um i kind of researched it i got on the internet and this is in the 90s so it isn't what it is now and then i found probiotics which i really kind of heard about i i thought it was only in yogurt you know i didn't know much about it but that was my introduction to probiotics and then i gave her some and within just a, a week she was it was all gone the yeast infection was totally gone so not only that but then as i said the digestive enzymes um just to make this so much easier to digest because there's just so much energy that is expended um when you're trying to digest foods the number one the number one uh, way we lose uh energy or use energy is the brain the thinking that's 85 percent of our energy is expended through thinking especially oh, high intense you know what about what about juicing do you juice at all yeah i juice all the time um one of my favorite juices is in season now uh pomegranate which is a biblical food probably the best one out there right pomegranate uh orange and grapefruit maybe a lemon that I just love that so pomegranates are in season uh i mean i was pay i paid a dollar a piece for them i've seen them as low as 50 cents but uh that is one of the number one extremely powerful antioxidant and just an just an incredible fruit you know and um and but i've been and i juice it kind of like an orange just i kind of citrus juice that people don't know how to eat a pomegranate but um you know say because all those seeds in there and everything but uh you know i i juice that so i usually juice the the orange and the grapefruit and um and then i put my pomegranate but yeah i do that my favorite juice is probably carrot uh beet um juice um i might put an apple in there i like that um there's no kind of juice i don't like you know you just got to sweeten it up a little bit so how um, much yeah juicing is a big part of it i don't think you can really be healthy if you don't juice okay yeah. and, uh, so how much juicing do you do throughout the day do you do one cup two cups three cups? no no i'll do it intermittently again um you know to how how busy i am how you know i got some there's some juicers out there now that are like 50 bucks you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a juicer um one i had cost me 35 dollars because it was on sale about a year ago but um yeah I, I just you know put the carrots in and the celery uh you know or whatever else you got in hand you can you know do the um uh, you could do pineapple what i like to do on the side is um i get if i really got the time and i want to do it right then i'll juice everything and then i'll i'll juice maybe a, a quarter to a half a cup of um ginger and then turmeric so I'll get the turmeric at the school, ju juice all those. And those are super powerful. So what I do with those is I kind of, you know, take a swig of that, you know, and it's pretty strong. And then I have some of my sweet juice. But yeah, I do it all the time. So I go in phases, like I'll go like a month and I'll do juice every single day. Sure. But, you know, it depends on, you know, how, how busy I am, what I got to do. But again, um, and another thing I like myself personally is bananas. I'm a big banana person. I have a couple a day. It's usually about two or three, maybe at the most. Uh, they're just super high energy food. They really fill you up. I always buy the organic ones. Um, as far as or you know, obviously in Michigan we don't get the growing season you got in Florida. But uh, my my so my summer garden is just full of all this stuff. I pretty much eat ninety percent of my food out of my garden during the summer. Um, I always get organic seeds. I, I I do a lot of greens. Um, I do tomatoes. I don't uh, I'm not really a believer in all this nightshade stuff you should avoid and all that. I don't I I I really don't know of any food raw food you should avoid other than the ones you were mentioning the poisonous ones. Like you don't want to do the. Um, so you are you know, okay with nightshades. 
I'm okay with nightshade. Yeah, I do. Let me ask you, videos. besides the food, how much sleep do you get every night? Seven to eight hours. Okay. Seven do you feel eight. that's Six enough is, for you? Yeah, that's enough for me. Six okay. is barely enough. And then I might want a nap in the day of six. Anything below six is not good. And I got to have, um, you know, I got to have a nap sometime in the day. And naps are good. I, I've been taking one. I've gone through years without napping. And, but I think a good 10, 15 minute nap, I don't think you should be napping for an hour or anything, my opinion. But a 10, 15 minute nap kind of rejuvenate yourself, kind of get you going again. Um, is not a bad idea. It kind of helps the brain to rest a little bit. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, again, um, just that uh, it's not, I don't get too obsessive about it. Some people get so obsessed about what they're doing. I just kind of like just eat raw foods. You know, I, I'd like give you an example. I got some good arugula at the, uh, not the stuff you get in the box. Usually that's, that's kind of the lower end stuff. It's okay. It's raw, you know. And I, I'd rather have a, a, a commercially grown raw food than a uh, an organically cooked food any day. You know, just sure. it's not I organic, mean, but it's the it's the it's the eating it raw is the is the is the, really the key. Well, I want to go through your books with you, but before I do, I got one more question. But everybody, if you want to contact Bob, his contact information can be below the video, his website, and all the social media. Uh, you could check him out there and uh, ask him questions. He gets back to you. He's wonderful. Uh, before we get into your books, uh, tell us, uh, give me an example, if you don't mind. And I know you buy some things wholesale because you, 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 you have a lot of things that you believe in. You only really sell what you believe in. So I know you get them in bigger quantities. But yeah. how much on the average uh, day would you say you spend or the average month in, in supplements? Or, you know, well, uh, you know, I'm I, I'm kind of I'm a manufacturer, so I'm buying all I'm buying everything in bulk, so it's kind of hard to say. But um, one one thing I will say, no matter what, don't ever put a price on your health because the most important thing in life is you have a relationship with God. Number two is your health, because if you're not healthy, you can't take care of your family, you can't run, you can't work, you can't bring in money, you become a liability instead of an asset. So. You become first, like they say, the plane's going down and put on your mask, put on the oxygen and then help your child. And don't try to put on theirs first, because if you pass out, then you're both dead. So I think sure. health is the key to it and uh, and staying healthy. So what do I spend? I, you know, honestly, I, um, you know, my wife does a lot of the shopping, but I mean, you know, years and years ago when I first got into it, I read the um, the, the statement that. The raw food diet is the best diet for the the king, the greatest king of any country in the world. And it's the best diet for any peasant. And it's the cheapest diet. So when you really look at it, you know, people say, God, I got to spend all this money um, on all these fruits and vegetables going into the store and everything. I mean, when you buy an apple, OK, that's the amount of nutrition you get. But there's a fiber in there. It's going to pass through your body's a juicer. So you're going to juice that, that extract that juice out of there, and you it's going to pass through you. Same with a banana with anything. Now, when you eat a box of Cheerios, okay, there's that much nutrition, and that's it. There's no, that's just a filler. And I, I haven't eaten anything out of a box or a jar or a can. Yeah, I mean, it's probably 40 years now. When I first moved to New York, that's when I started getting away from all that kind of well, stuff, you know, here's especially the thing. these days. Here's the thing. I want to get into your books, but I don't want anyone to be confused by what Bob's saying, because some people can see it in a confusing way, because you're talking about the raw foods and how great they are and how natural they are and how much nutrients they are. But you also talk about a lot of these supplements right. that come in bottles and so on. Now, I am a big proponent of uh, It's It's excellent for prevention. It's excellent for many things. And over the years, I've subscribed supplements to people because I look at their blood work and whether it's in the food or not, you got to make sure you're getting it. So I understand supplements. I'm not an anti-supplement person. Uh, so I, I want nobody to misunderstand. But Bob, try to explain it briefly and then we'll get into your books. Uh, the, you got the food and you got the supplements because I interview a lot of people that say all they need is the food. Everything we need is in the food and the food is fine. And they've been doing this for like 30 years. And I know yeah. one guy, he'd say he doesn't even, he hasn't drank water in 30 years. He just drinks coconut water and eats fruits and vegetables. Uh -huh. 
Uh, and we all know some people that even eat meat that are healthy later on in life and people that aren't. You're right. doing what's working for you, but what are you recommending? Because not everyone could spend hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars each month yeah, yeah. on supplements. So like if you had to limit it, what would you recommend? I know that the, the spirulina, uh, you know, and the chlorella, but yeah. if somebody can only take like five supplements and, and eat the best diet they can eat, what would you suggest, Bob? Okay, so obviously as many different types of raw fruits and vegetables as you can. Okay, there's that. Then supplements, you know, here's, here's um, you know, spirulina and chlorella. This is together in one tablet. So that's my number two. If you want to call them supplements, again, I think they're whole foods. But okay, that's number that's number one is are those two foods. Because when you're taking a small handful, with, and that's uh, according to the size of your hand, in other words, if you're a little child or a small woman, you have a smaller hand or you're a big man, you got a bigger hand and you take that with your meal. That's all the protein you need for that meal. Um, and then if you want to eat meat, fish, eggs or dairy, it's strictly for the taste. And these are the most nutritionally dense foods with the broadest array of nutrients of any foods in the world. So that's number one. Number two, I would say uh, you got to get mineralized. Um, it's, you know, when I first had my minerals, um, you know, um, examined. I was doing a urine test at the time. You can do your hair, but urine's a little better. Um, you know, I could see I was missing all these, all these minerals in my body. And it's hard to get something like cobalt, you know, where you're going to find cobalt. Um, another thing I, uh, I'll tell you, we can get into exactly what I do. But another thing I take almost every night before I go to bed is, is gold, liquid angstrom gold. Um, now that's not going to find, be found in any foods, but gold is definitely, you know, there's lots of studies, but we can see it's good for the brain. It's good for sleeping, uh, sleep regulation. It really has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of new uh, benefits to the body. Another one's platinum. I've got one here. I take that in the morning. You're not going to find platinum in food. Um, you know, indium, I take indium in the afternoon, almost every day. That's for your pineal gland. So, um, you know, so you, I'm supplementing and then I've got a full spectrum that's got them all in there. So I have different ones. Um, so, I, you know, I think what supplements can do is enhance what the basis of your raw food diet. I think it just enhances it tremendously. I just mentioned one of my go to's, uh, which is as, uh, ashwagandha. So I take ashwagandha every single day. Now, you know, um, you can do ashwagandha a couple different ways. You could chop it up and try to find, get it. You can't find it anywhere. It's a root, so it's hard to find. And then uh, you could do a tincture out of it with alcohol and extract it, and that'll go right into your bloodstream, and that's really effective. Um, and then, um, or you could do an extract, which is what I sell and what I promote. And, you know, there's like a 1% or 25 or uh, one and a half or 25 percent It goes up to like 10%. And again, you're looking for this active chemical. So to get the, say, at, uh, ashwagandha, willithinoids, that's what you're looking for. That's the active ingredient. Um, in Tonkat Alley, it's uh, uricone, okay? So it takes, uh, if you want really get good uh, Tonkat Alley, it's a, about 100 to 1 extract. So you, same with like chlorella growth factor. So it takes 100 pounds of chlorella to make one, one pound of, of chlorella extract. It takes 100 pounds or probably more almost from what I'm eating, 100, 150 pounds of ashwagandha to get these, these willithinoids that are really extracted. So, um, you know, to really get that, you could just take ashwagandha powder and put it on your food or start taking every day. I mean, it's just not strong enough to really make a huge effect. And that's the, it, that's the advantage of supplements. Now, I don't, get too, I don't get too much into the vitamin supplements. I don't do, I talked to, I said D is kind of hard to get and you get a sunlight in Michigan, you know, we have almost no sun here. So, you know how it is in New York, the same way, you know, and then C, you can't really take too much C. Um, you know, people can say you could take up to six grams a day. I usually take a couple tablets, about one gram a day at the most. Uh, vitamin E, I don't take that too very often myself. You can find it in a lot of foods. It's all over the place, but can you get enough of it? It's just like these nucleic acids, the RNA. Can you get enough of them for foods? Almost no, it's, you really can't. So you're gonna have to supplement with something like CGF or this Fragilis, this, uh, this uh, yeast that I, was, I mentioned. There's another thing that I sell, but you want these nucleic acids. It's a key to longevity. And just like you want the HGH, human growth hormone for longevity. I'd say I would attribute <clears throat> my longevity and feeling the way I do, which is clear-minded 
every single day. I, I'm full of energy. Uh, I have no blood issue. You know, I mean, I have my blood work done. I have no issues in there. And uh, but I, I attribute my long my my this youthfulness to Makuna and uh, Makuna prurians. That's an herb. Um, it, some people call it velvet beans. And uh, I do a 15% extraction. You don't need, that's what they use for Parkinson's disease is Makuna. But again, they synthesize it. You wanna stay away from any, you can't, you can't duplicate nature and, and, and you can't change nature. And I tell people all the time, they say, why do you eat a raw food diet? I said, well, God grew an apple and we made a frying pan and you can't improve on God's creation. I mean, there it is, there's the apple. I mean, you can make an apple pie and it's gonna taste better than the apple. I wanna eat apple pie. You know, but you haven't improved that. You changed it. You made it taste better, but you did not improve on that original apple. And it's all out there for you. And I think to take these things, such as as an example, ashwagandha, or what we call holy basil, or you know, people call it different names, but blessed basil, holy basil, and extract it and concentrate. That's that's really amazing that we can do that, and just take a few pills to get these incredible benefits. Because what you're looking for in the ashwagandha are willithanoids, okay? What you're looking for in any of these other supplements, for instance, the holy basil, is this one particular nutrient. So they look for that and they, you know, if you want a different nutrient, like for instance, another one I take is milk thistle. Now I could go out and get all this milk thistle and try to eat it and all this stuff. It's not easy to find and it's not easy to eat. Um, you got to juice it. You got to do something, you know, to get, get it what's in there. Or you can just buy milk thistle extract. So 80%. And that's what I do. That's incredible for the liver, liver very rejuvenating. So I just think going back, the macoon is the number one thing. I take it right before I go to bed because that's, you produce uh, HGH, human growth hormone, about two hours after REM sleep. So uh, when you're dreaming. So if you've got that, um, if you got the HGH present, and you got the L-DOPA is what the active ingredient you're looking for. You'll make that. So I really think what supplements do, and I, you know, I, to be honest, I was not, I was against supplements two years ago and I got introduced to them by- How many years ago? Pardon me? Two years ago? No, several years, maybe oh, several like 15 years, years, years ago. Two years no, ago. Okay. You know, okay. Many years ago. I okay. mean, probably it was in the mid 2000s when I first started saying, wow, um, uh, you know, you can really help with these herbal. Like extracts. I said, there's, there's popular people. I mean, like a lot of people I interview they're 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 okay with some supplements. I'm okay with some supplements. Uh, some people don't do any, but then there's people like Dr. Morse who highly believes in a raw food fruitarian diet, but he also believes in a lot of herbs, which are considered supplements. So a lot of, a lot of different ways to do this, everybody, but uh, again, Bob is a, a proof that this is working. I mean, anyone that could run under a 10 minute miles, they're doing, they're doing something okay. I mean, I know a lot of unhealthy people that might be able to do that because they're just focused on fitness. But for the most part, I mean, look at him. He's 65. Look at him. Uh, Bob, we're wrapping up here before we go. Uh, briefly, can you roll through, uh, talk about your books and what's in your books? And everybody, you can contact Bob. I'll put all his contact information below. Uh, you know, talk about your books, Bob. Here briefly. Okay. Don't get too. We don't have too much time, but just I know you. Okay. Got yeah, I'll just roll through them. I'll roll through them. So I got um. So my first book was called Confessions of a Bodybuilder, and it was about spirulina and chlorella. I published that in two thousand, and then I really revamped it and I redid it. And this is my really kind of my one of my best books. My best one I'll show you at the end. But this is. The seven achieving great health, the seven components of great health gives you my whole health protocol, what I believe. And here you'll see, I don't talk too much about supplements at all, what you can do. And by the way, if you, well, I'll talk about that one in a minute. And then, um, and then I wrote a book, uh, this one, which is, uh, this one here is my book on silver. Now, the way that came about, uh, I had meningitis. And I didn't know I had meningitis. And I'm thinking I'm a raw foodist and I'm in big trouble. I thought I got poisoned. I don't know what it was. It was, at 2000, it was in 2012. Um, it was in the mosquitoes. And anyway, long story, I went to China. I got through it in 10 days. And it's a 21, you talk about this stuff they got now, you know, the stupid virus. That's nothing. It's a 21% mortality rate with meningitis. And uh, so I got to China and it came back. And I had this little tiny bit of liquid angstrom silver and uh, cause I brought it from my wife, she had a cold. And uh, 
and it went away within hours and I documented it and I showed how I had these welts on my legs and it felt like I'd run a hundred miles. My legs were so sore and my, it comes down into your shoulders. I mean, it's, it's, it's a devastating disease. Brain damage is usually the result of meningitis, but I got through with it. And I said, you know what, God didn't do this to me for nothing. I got to write about what happened. So that's my little booklet on that. We've been using silver for thousands of years and uh, you know, the medical establishment, they just denounce it and reject it and do all that. Then I wrote this book. This is actually my third degree uh, edition. This is the temple he was referring to was his body. That's the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he was telling me, this is your temple. Well, when you get sick, it's because you put the wrong things in your body. Okay, you you did this. So this is not a measure. You know, people, all disease comes from your diet. Nothing, you don't inherit anything. You inherit your hair color, your, you know, your intelligence, your height, your looks. That's it. All disease comes from our diet. You will not find any chronic critical, uh, any chronic disease in the wild. No one has ever shot a deer um, or any other animal in the in wild and brought it back and found it full of cancer, arthritis, fibromyalgia, or anything. So it's it's Christian based. There's not a huge amount of scripture in here, uh, but it's my health protocol, my seven component health protocol, and it shows you why you want to honor the temple that God gave you, and that's very important. We talked about all healthy. My latest book. Uh, my latest book is uh, is this one here. I got another. I write short love stories. The cover. Too. I love the cover. Yeah, thanks. So this is the cure in the mirror. So where do you find the cure for all disease? Go look in the mirror. You're the greatest physician <laughs> in the world. It's you. It's you. It's what you put into your body. And so people, you know, I tell you, I if you're sick, it's because you did it. And the message here is empowerment. Because if you did it, you can undo it. And you can do it. And you cannot believe the incredible rejuvenative properties of the human body. I mean, you can do you could you can do a lot of bad things to it. But when you end up with cancer, and by the way, this is a book on cancer uh, primarily. It's all my health protocol, and I have I tell you exactly what to do if you have cancer. But I spend about half of the uh, book uh, denouncing the medical establishment when it comes to chronic and infectious disease. Okay, they're good in an emergency situations when you get in an accident. Other than that, they're worthless. They don't know anything about disease. They've taken control of it. They're sitting on, sitting on the throne of health when they belong and when guys like us belong on the throne of health. And they, they should be sitting on the throne of medicine. And, and medicine uh, doesn't lead to health. They're in totally opposite direction. But uh, the reason I wrote this book, and I've been, you know, it took me three years to write this, but um, uh, everybody either has cancer or they know somebody with cancer. It's, it's just become so common in our society. So people say, well, do you have a cancer protocol or something? So I had, a, had something written up. But anyway, I wrote this book. So that's my, my really my latest book and, and my best book. And then I write books of short stories and stuff like that. I write novels. I'm, I'm a real, I'm a writer by, I was born to write. That's what I really do. This, uh, this is just, <laughs> this is how I make a living, but I was born to write. But I'm always writing a new book. I'm working on a novel. I'm working on another health book um, about uh, spirulina and chlorella. I'm always doing something like that because uh, it's the great, you know, God gave me uh, the will to do this. He gave me the knowledge to do it. He gave me the brain. So I got to pass it on to other people. It's not just about me making myself healthy. It's making people have to learn that they can do all this themselves. They don't need the medical establishment. They don't need medications. Uh, they don't lead to anything but uh, trouble. You know, anybody will tell you that. So, and I've never been on a medication. Uh, I was when I was a kid, not for very long. I wasn't really a sickly kid, um, but uh, I've never been on a medication. I don't take any medications now. And this for the record, I don't know anyone on my, that's my age that isn't on medication for arthritis. Uh, they can't sleep, They're, they take Ambien, you know. I mean, this, this stuff is really, you know, if any one of my products had any of the health warnings, that these pharmaceuticals have. They would never let it on the market. They would never, no, no. I mean, 2% people get internal bleeding. I mean, they, who would buy that? This causes how internal bleeding. Chlorella does that, you know? And, and I've always noticed that mothers scrutinize these foods so much and what's in there. Can my children take it? And is it safe? And I, and I answer all their questions. And I said, now, I like all these questions. You should, this is the way you should think about this. And you should also think that way about all the other crap that you see in the supermarkets, like soft drinks, like pop, like Coca-Cola, all this stuff is just in all these stuff in bags and all these chips. Look and see what's in there. Think about, is there a potato chip tree? You know, is there a, is there a pizza tree? Is there a, 
you know, is there a steak bush? No, there's none of these things. You know, there's there's raw fruits and vegetables. There's an apple tree. There's, you know, all these things. And before I forget, uh, so I got a few other books, but won't go into it. But before I, so I just so I don't forget, um, another thing I do in the winter is I do a lot of sprouting. <clears throat> I do a whole bunch of, it's, it's easy. And if you want the cheapest food and some of the healthiest food you ever put into your body, get yourself some organic spree, seeds and, uh, and just get yourself sprouting. I do broccoli seeds. I do, uh, you know, red clover. I have a whole variety. I do, uh, I do um, radish seeds. So that's a big part of my uh, dinner and my, my consumption in the winter because you can't, I don't have a garden anymore. I'm not like you lucky guys down in Florida. So there you uh, go. I, agree. I fully agree. I'm a big uh, component of sprouting. Yeah. And uh, I fully agree with that. And I, I just want to thank you for your time today. And again, I'm going to put your contact information below for people that want to check out your books and get in touch with you. And thank you so much for all the information you share and, uh, and keep up the great work you're doing. I appreciate it. Watershed.net. Uh, you can find all, uh, all, by the way, all these books I showed you here, they're all on Audible. So I read them myself. And it's one of the hardest things I've ever done to read a book. It is super difficult not to make a mistake. It's very time consuming, but I put all these on audible.com or they're on Amazon and you just look up Bob McCauley, ND, that's naturopathic doctor, and you'll find all my books and go to shop.watershed.net. I'll answer all your questions. It's a great, greatest gift of my life to be able to tell people how to be healthy because it's so important. Thanks for having me, Paul. You're the best. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. We'll talk soon. And thank you everybody for watching, for your comments and questions below and everybody have a great day. Check out all my books on audible.com.